Hey, Billy Glisson with PowerCore 360. And in this video, I'm gonna show you the fastest way. Hey, what about training for 24 hours to make you a world-class power hitter? Is that believable? Or do you subscribe to the fact that you think you gotta train for 10 years or 10,000 reps? Hang around with this video. I'm gonna show you how you can do it in 24 hours. Hey, and stick around to the end and I'll give you free access to our private power hitting Facebook group and you can see the kinds of things and the kind of training we do with our power hitters. All right, so let's quickly cover just a little bit of really applied anatomy so you can understand the training for sports, how it's a process, all right? All right, this is the back side of the body. We've got the head up here. We've got the brain sitting inside the head. From the brain, we've got the brain stem and then the spinal cord that goes all the way down, right? We've got the back of the body here. We've got your right deltoid or shoulder muscle, your right bicep, and your right scap or shoulder blade or scapula for short. We also got another muscle down here on the bottom called the lower trap or the lower trapezius. Those are the three muscles we're going to work with in a very simple concept here. So understand that the brain is the main computer up here and it provides the instructions for everything that the body does, whether it's your heart beating or your muscles moving, or in this case, we're talking about hitting a volleyball with power, right? It's the brain that has the instructions for that. People talk about muscle memory. Muscles really don't have memory. It's the brain that has the memory and then the brain shares that memory or the instructions, if you would, for movement down with the muscles that are gonna move the bones and ultimately move the body. The way that the instructions get from the brain, let's say to the deltoid muscle, to the bicep muscle, or the lower trap muscles, is through microvolts of electricity. So from the brain down to all parts of the body, but those specific three muscles for right now, it happens with little microvolts of electricity. And these are like electrical cords that go basically from the brain and if I draw you a purple one here, we're gonna go down to the lower trapezius muscle that connects to the bottom of the shoulder blade of the scap here. And if you go down here, actually, let's, let's stop halfway, but imagine going down from the brain stem that we've got all these tens of thousands of nerves or little electrical cords that are sending little micro, microvolts of electricity all throughout the body. In this case, if you took a little cross section of the spinal cord a little way down in the neck area, we took a cross section of that. What I want you to notice is there are probably tens of thousands of these nerves, right? And you can see them in different colors here. They're like dots. And that's a cross section of all those tens of thousands of nerves that are originating in the brain and going all over to the body, all over all the muscles of the body, right? And so what I want you to understand, I'm going to use a purple one here. And let's just imagine that from the brain, we know we have at least one spinal cord that goes all the way down, excuse me, one nerve that goes all the way down and it comes out here and it connects with this lower trapezius muscles. If we're wanting the shoulder blade to move, one of the muscles that can move it is this lower trapezius. And what I want you to really understand is we have probably a, a set of a few hundred nerve fibers that actually go down from the brain to that specific muscle group to make the scapula move in a very highly specialized way, right? We also have other nerves, and so let's use a different color here. Let's go to the deltoid muscle. So it comes down also through the brain, through the spinal cord, and up through the neck area, it comes out through the neck, and it runs over here, and it connects to the deltoid muscle. And so when we want the deltoid muscle to work to move the arm, there's very specific nerves that, sh that send that electricity, those microvolts of electricity from the brain down to the deltoid to make that work. The deltoid might be working and the lower traps are not working or vice versa. Let's add one more and try to keep it as simple as we can here. Also coming down from the brain and coming out in the same area through the neck, we're going down, we've got another set of nerves that go down and go to the bicep, okay? And they make the bicep muscle work. The nerves carry microvolts of electricity if there's enough electricity going down into those muscles, the muscles will actually shorten, contract, and that will move bones, and that creates movements. Movements of the arms, the legs, the shoulder blade, whatever it is we're trying to move. One of the key messages here is that you've got to understand specific training, like if we're trying to move our shoulder blade, scap load, connect, pull the arm down under the chin, that is a highly specialized movement. And we can't just turn on the muscles of the shoulder or the bicep or any old muscle in the body. We need specific muscles to help us do that work. It's a specific pattern. We're going to actually train specific nerves 
to make, in this case, the shoulder blade learn how to connect in a very specific way to help pull the arm back and pull the arm down underneath the chin and the shoulder. Okay, now let's talk about how training actually impacts or builds muscle memory. And once again, muscle memory is not an accurate term, but we're gonna use it in a simple sense here, right? The first time, let's, let's say this, let's take the bicep for example, and everybody knows what the bicep does. We talk about bicep curls, right? Well, for me to move my bicep, for it to work and to move my arm, once again, my brain has to have a signal that sends down microvolts of electricity to the bicep and tells it to shorten and lengthen, right? And then if I do it enough, I get very proficient at that. If you think about an infant, right? And an infant is moving and their arms moving, their heads moving, everything's moving in a very uncoordinated fashion. Why is that different from you take an elite athlete and you watch an elite athlete and when they move their body, it looks effortless, right? It's very smooth, it's very coordinated. What's different between an infant, a toddler, a youth, and a pro athlete, an elite athlete? Let's get into that. Because one of the toughest movements that we teach, one of the most specialized movements that we teach is how the shoulder blade, the scap, if you would, connects down flat against the back, the rib cage underneath it, right? The muscles of the lower traps, the serratus, other muscle groups actually help to work to pull that shoulder blade down flat and hold it there as we draw the arm down underneath the chin and the shoulder, right? Well, let's go over here and imagine that this one set of nerves that's going from the brain down the brain stem and comes out here and connects into those lower trapezius muscles. Let's talk about what happens when we first start to work that. Of course, most athletes, most people in general, don't know, understand what their scapula is, their shoulder blade. They don't really know where it is. They know it's back there somewhere, but they don't really know what it does. More importantly, from a movement perspective, they don't know how to move it. And so in week three of our training program, when we start talking about how to move your scap, how to connect it first, how the scap actually helps to start move the arm, right? Well, let's, let's dig in a little deeper and start to understand the process or why it's a process here. If this is the brain, and this is our one nerve coming down from the brain to the brain stem and going down to that lower trapezius muscle to create scap movement, a shoulder blade movement. When we first start, most athletes, once again, they don't move it much. And so there's very little activity that's going through microvolts of electricity from the brain down to those muscles, the lower trap muscles. Oftentimes they're shut off, they're inhibited, they're not working very well. So the shoulder blade is up, it's rotated, it's tilted, it's, all these, it's in all these positions because of really kind of the lack of use. Now all of a sudden in week three, we start telling you or the athlete to start moving their scap, how to connect it, how to move it. We're doing the seated pull exercises. Well, the reason why it tends to seem like it takes so long and it's so frustrating is athletes can't feel really how to move it. And when they start to move it, Here's what happens. The body, and some people will talk about that it takes 10 years or 10,000 repetitions for someone to become an elite athlete, right? An elite shot putter, an elite volleyball hitter, an elite celloist, an elite mathematician. Whatever nerves they're working to create movements in the body, it takes 10 years or 10,000 reps is what a lot of people have said for a long time. I'm gonna tell you it's not true, and I'm gonna talk to you in a little bit here, and I'm gonna explain why in physical terms, why it can happen faster. But let's first understand what happens. If I wanna move my scap and I put my hand or your parent or your coach or someone on your shoulder blade and starts to teach you how to flatten it down there and you start doing your seated pull exercises. The first time you do that, the first few times, what happens is the brain as it sends signals, the body can create what's called myelin. And myelin is nothing more than what we call a, a, a lipid or a fat, but its job is it starts wrapping. So let's say in week three, you start doing some exercises. What the body's gonna do is it's gonna be very efficient. Say, okay, if you want me to start moving the scapula, the shoulder blade in these very specific ways, what I'm gonna do is put a coating. I'm gonna start wrapping this nerve with a little coating. So let's say you go in and you do your three days of, of your reps, right? And maybe you've done 50, 100, 150 reps that week with all the exercises combined. What happens is every time you do that, you start getting a little wrapping of this fat tissue around that nerve. You go into week three, you do your exercises, you get a little bit, you get that, we call that a wire, right? Or the nerve gets wrapped in a little bit of this fat tissue. Well, now that's week three. In week four, you start doing more. And every time you do it, 
the body starts saying, okay, I'm going to start putting a little bit more of this fat tissue, this myelin, around these nerves. So I'm wrapping this fat tissue around the nerves. Okay, what does that do for you? It's the body's way of, number one, once it gets wrapped, it's like insulation around an electrical cord, right? And what will happen in terms of the speed of how quickly the electricity goes from the brain down to the muscles of the lower trap to move the scalp, what happens is now those impulses go more efficiently and faster and quicker. If we do it enough, we go through week three, week four, week five, week six, what's gonna really start happening is we're gonna really start wrapping this myelin around there. Now, how fast does this happen? It may take you 10 years or 10,000 reps to wrap this myelin around there to build what you call muscle memory, right? To wrap it around there where this becomes a coordinated movement without any kind of thought, automated, right? Just automatic, I don't even have to think about it. In fact, I just go up there, I see the ball and my body's learned how to do this. Well, that doesn't happen in week three. It doesn't happen in week four. The process starts in week three and it continues in week four. The reality, it means, the reality is it may take you three months, three years, right, depending on how you train to really wrap the nerves that we're working on, on the scap, on the arm, the shoulder, the hip turn, the torso turn, whatever it is we're working on, could take a long time if the athlete isn't focused in their training, right? So we talk about, um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna reference a book here, right? We call, talk about the talent code. The talent code, and I'll put it in the description down below, is by Daniel Coyle. It is a great book, it's a great audio book. I highly recommend it for any parent, coach, or athlete that wants their, their athlete to get better, or the athletes they're training to get better. They will use the term deep practice in there. And deep practice just means, other terms we're gonna talk about is highly focused, intent. It all, it's all synonymous, it means the same thing. If I wanna speed up the building of muscle memory, or really what we're saying is, I, if I wanna speed up the process of wrapping myelin, this fat tissue around there faster, so this process becomes faster, then what I've gotta be able to do is, I've gotta have highly focused thought process when I'm doing my reps, I'm doing my seated pulls, I'm doing my seated pushes, I'm doing my walk-ins, I'm hitting into the net, I'm doing all the lead-ins that you see in week three, four, five, and six that start adding in there, right? All those drills I'm having you do, are to be wrapping those specific wires to the specific muscles we need for your arm, your shoulder, your hips, your torso to start learning how to do this and do it fast. Now, if your athlete isn't paying attention, if they're just, you know, like in their head, they're not paying any attention, any focus on what they're doing, if the arm movement isn't precise, if the shoulder blade isn't precise, then we'll start getting other nerves down here trying to go to the scap and they start firing, okay? And there may be some other ones, different colors, right? It doesn't really matter the colors, but there's just different nerves because the lack of the athlete's focus in here doesn't keep firing the same nerves over and over. The body is trying to figure out, you know, how to make it work. But if the athlete's not focused on precise movements, then this other nerve might create a little different part of the trapezius muscle to fire, but maybe not exactly the way we want. Here's the real quick takeaway. If you want to train and become an, a world-class athlete, world-class mechanics, and not take 10 years and 10,000 reps to do it, if you wanna do it in six months or in a year or two or something that's reasonable, you gotta be highly focused on your movements. And you have gotta be so focused that you know exactly what you're doing. We start with those slow movements and we do those slow because you can be precise and the brain can track. All right, my hand and arm are coming down my shoulder line my elbows pointing diagonally at the ground, all the things you hear me talk about and see me talk about in the analyses and the feedback. If I start going too fast, once again, and I'm not paying attention, I got other nerves that are working. And yeah, every time those nerves fire over here, he gets a little myelin wrapped around and then this one gets a little bit. What we want is we want the precise same nerves to get wrapped really fast. So it takes reps and we're not talking about, so sometimes parents, you guys get frustrated. Oh, my son or my daughter's in week three or week four, and they're frustrated they're not getting it yet. Yeah, because you know what? They've never moved their shoulder blade like this. They don't have the strength in their trapezius, their serratus, their mid-trap, 
the rhomboids, all the muscles and other muscles that need to work to get the shoulder blade to flatten, to move the arm in the specific way, they've never done it. And in two weeks, the process is starting, but it is a process. It is not, you know, like, okay, knowledge. Knowledge is, okay, now I know how to do it. Why can't I do it? Because it's not a matter of just knowledge. Knowledge is step one. Now it becomes a training process, a training process that requires deep thought, heavy focus, concentration on doing it right. Make sense? Okay, not every athlete wants or should be doing this type of training, okay? What I think some athletes find out in our eight-week master class is, you know what, this is a lot of work. No one's telling you this is easy. But I'm also saying that there's not elite athletes, elite athletes running around on every street because the athletes that can take the time and focus and dedication to do the reps, do the work, especially with deep practice and focus, they're the ones that over days, weeks, months, years, time, if you would, can develop the myelin around the specific nerves in the body, whether it's going to your shoulder blade, your neck, your arm, your hips, your toes, it doesn't matter. They've got to be able to do the work, the reps, and it usually does take lots and lots of reps with lots and lots of focus. The athletes that can get that focused and are that motivated to do it and do the work and do it repeatedly to build up this myelin, those are the ones that build the right muscle memory. Those are the ones that in a few weeks, a few months, a few years, you look at and you're like, oh my goodness, they just used to look so uncoordinated. Yeah, that was before they started doing all the specific work building the myelin, building the muscle memory, building the coordination to teach the body to perform very advanced, very complex, very precise movements. So the masterclass is not designed for recreational athletes. It's not for the athlete, athlete that just wants to go play recreational volleyball, maybe an athlete that just wants to go play high school volleyball. It's for someone that's, that is looking well beyond high school, wants to be a really good club player, and more than likely, wants to be a great volleyball player and go on to play college, maybe even the pros, because it's going to take a lot of work, it's going to take a lot of focus and reps to do it right, right? The reward is there, and the reward is, once you start learning how to do this, this process, when we've done enough reps, we've built the myelin, the brain knows the instructions for how to do it, and the brain can very quickly through the myelin send the right bolts, microvolts of electricity to the right muscles in a very coordinated fashion, to jump in the air, turn your hips, turn your chest, turn your shoulder, bring the arm down here, get the reverse power C, rotate, do all the things we're teaching, right? It takes time for that to happen. Athletes who are willing to do the work will get better. Recreational athletes, we don't, you, they shouldn't be focused on this, right? They don't want to work this hard. They just want to go out and play. And for them, if we're worried about shoulder stress or back stress, right? If they're only hitting the ball a couple times a week for a few weeks in, in, in you know, middle school, or in high school or recreational volleyball, and then they're done, you know, they're probably not doing enough volume. I say probably enough volume with enough force to really cause damage. Who I'm really talking to are those athletes who are playing, you know, they're playing high school ball in the fall. They go from high school into club. They go from club to, you know, other kinds of events. If they're really good athletes, they're playing in other events. And then they're training in the off season. So for a lot of those kids, they're not getting much of an off season or downtime, right? And so there's constant load. The mechanics got to be really good. We've got to take the stress off the shoulder, off the back, and other, other joints, other body parts so that they can perform at a very high level, not get injured, and long-term have healthy shoulder, healthy spine, healthy knees, everything else that we're concerned with. But it is not for the recreational athlete. It is not for the athlete that just wants to be, I want to just go have fun and play in high school. Too much work involved, and work is the, is, is the word here that we've got to understand it is work. There are great rewards there because once you learn to move the body in a coordinated fashion, right, you're going to actually hit the ball harder. You're going to take the stress off the shoulder, the back. You're going to hit the ball so hard. It's going to feel so good. It's going to feel effortless. It's going to look effortless. And you've got a long career, not only maybe in high school, club, collegiately, maybe the pros, but you should be able to play your entire life. And the cool thing is, unless you have a head, a neck injury, or something like that, or a stroke, right, this, it's like riding a bike when you're a young kid. You ride a bike when you're eight, nine, 10 years old. You don't get on a bike for 20 or 30 years. You get on 20 or 30 years later, you still know how to ride a bike. Why? Because you rode a bike and at an age and you developed the myelin around the right muscles that the body can learn to coordinate and balance and pedal the bike, right? 
It's the same thing with same thing here with volleyball. If we can train the muscles at a young age and the joints and everything to do the right motions, you'll be able to hit hard and then you can play when you're 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years of age and hopefully still have a neck, shoulder, hip, back, knees, right, that are still healthy and able to tolerate and enjoy the game. Okay, as a parent, understand you guys are going to get frustrated. Sometimes you're building in, in, in Sometimes you're building off the energy or the frustration from your athlete, right? And, and I get that. You're helping your athlete get better. The athlete gets a little frustrated, like, why is this taking so long? Because don't, good things don't happen in terms of myelin overnight. It takes time, reps, focus, weeks, months, years, if you're really expecting to be that great athlete, right? Parents, you guys have to understand. Athletes, you have to understand this is a process. It does take time. From my perspective, in week three, week four, week five, when I hear somebody saying, I'm frustrated, she's frustrated, it's like, yeah, welcome to athletic development, right? If this was easy, then everybody would be a Division I hitter. Everybody would have power. Everyone would be able to jump really high. Everybody would be really fast, right? But not everybody's willing to do that work. But understand those that are willing to do it, there's great benefits there, but it does take work. And, and you've got to let go of the, of the thought and the process that this is going to happen quickly. This will happen quickly, much quicker than 10 years and 10,000 reps, if in fact your athlete will follow the program, you'll support them following the program. And that means if they're supposed to be doing it three times a week, doing it two times per week and not paying attention is not following the program. That's, that's the kid or the athlete that's on track for the 10 years, 10,000 reps, maybe, if ever. The athletes that I'm seeing get better and hurry are the athletes that are doing the three or four times per week. They're paying attention. They're doing the work. It does require effort. It does create frustration. That is all a necessary part of work and development, and it's actually a weeding out process, right? Those athletes, once again, that can push themselves, stay focused, do the work, even through the frustration, the tears, whatever might be there, there is a, the other side when they come out, it's called myelin, it's called coordination, and it's called elite athlete that looks great. Make sense? So we're not here in the master class, we're not looking for elite athletes. The reality is we're trying to take athletes and turn them into, develop them into elite athletes. In my opinion, there's only a few athletes that are so different genetically than every other athlete I run into in the volleyball world. I see I don't see that much difference between the 13-year-olds I run into, but I've seen 13-year-olds go into what looks like an average athlete, do the right work, stay the course, get focused, and I've seen them turn into look world-class hitters in a period of a few months because they did the right work, the, the precise work with the right focus. But yeah, we're not after, we're not looking for elite athletes. We're looking to take athletes who want to become elite and train them and show them how to do that with our guides and our program and our equipment. All right, I'm gonna end this with just a little bit of advanced information here. So let's say that this athlete's went through the eight week master class. Maybe they've trained a little bit longer, but what starts happening up here, remember the brain I said, it's like the mainframe, it's the computer up here. And muscle memory is not down here, it's actually the instructions for your scat movement, for how to get in the reverse power C, all these things we're training the athletes to do, those instructions are being developed up in the brain. Now, when the brain has done it enough, it comes up here and it says, you know what, I'm going to file up here or store up here in a brain the instructions, <coughs> excuse me, right here to hit with, you know, with power. And I want my, I want to get in the reverse power C and I want to kick my feet and turn my hips. I want the arm coming down here and I want the scap loading first and all the stuff that we're training. These instructions get stored up here. Here's what's really cool. Once it gets stored, the athlete literally doesn't have to train as much. They could go in their room, they could go before the game, they could visualize that motion that they're going to perform, and guess what happens? They think about it, and then this little area of instructions gets activated, right? The brain thinks about it, gets activated, and guess what? Now it finds those nerves right, and says, sends down the signals to those nerves that have now been wrapped with myelin, and even thinking about the process is like training, and it continues to build the instructions. The more they think about it, the more secure, the faster this happens, 
and the more coordinated it happens, right? That's the athlete that looks effortless. This is really cool stuff. Right now, that's a year or two down the road for your athletes. If they're 13 or 14, which is what we think is the ideal age to be training these mechanics, before the athlete has taken a bunch of, they played club for three or four or five years, they've got a bunch of bad swings, high elbow, they've got the wrong instructions written up there, and those instructions aren't going away. Like, here's their, here's their high elbow instructions, right? And it's, it's written up here, and it's stored up here, and if they've been doing that four or five years, those instructions are there, and those instructions go down over here, over here to the shoulder or to the arm, and they teach that. Well, we don't, when, you, when you're trying to create a new movement pattern, the old movement pattern's still there. We're not going in and removing the instructions. We're not removing the nerves. We're not removing the myelin. It's there. The good news is when an athlete is 13 or 14, we don't probably have a, a ton of bad swings in there. So it doesn't take as much work and that much time to develop this new pattern of really good mechanics, right? Getting our body in good position, arm and shoulder in a good position. So it's important to understand when your athlete is now 16, 17, 18, or a college athlete, and you try to make these changes, and they've got nine or 10 years and hundreds of thousands of reps, they firmly built those instructions in their brain to, to hit with a high elbow or whatever mechanics they were using, it's there. And the myelin's already been wrapping around for now years into the muscles to create the pattern of the high elbow swing or whatever swing they were using. So ideally 13 or 14 is good. 12s maybe, if the 12 is actually an athlete who can focus. Some 12 year olds are very mature in their thinking. They can sit down, they can focus, and they can do the work, and they have to, right? If we wanna get the right nerves myelinated, they have to do that. Some 12s can't. Some 13s and some 14s can't, right? But some can, and it really comes down to the athletes determining, even at a young age or 13 or 14, I think I wanna get better, okay? So they try the master class. They go through the eight weeks. If they can get through the eight weeks and focus, they will get dramatically better. And then we'll start separating out some of the athletes, right? That like, I don't want to work that hard. And that's great as a parent to be able to have that discussion with your athlete, right? Maybe they don't want to work that hard. Maybe they are going to be just the high school player. Maybe they are going to be just the rec player. All of that's great. You can save money on travel ball and club, right? But understand the process is, we want to make sure that we're developing the right instructions in the brain. And then later on, it's really cool because even just thinking about doing it in specific ways reinforces this, this connection down here that's been wrapped in, in, in myelin and now it's firmly secured in there. All right, let's look at something. Let's look at some numbers here. If I said to you that an athlete is going to train in our eight week master class and they're going to train for eight weeks, right? And in that eight weeks, we require that they do three sessions per week, right? Well, we take three times eight. We've got basically what it's saying is um, we've got 24 sessions. And if those 24 sessions, let's just say that each session was equal to one hour. So basically what we've got is, hey, 24 hours of training, right? If I said to you as an athlete, Hey, if in 24 hours, let's say today is Friday, and if in 24 hours, let's say it's two o'clock right now, if I could make you a world-class hitter by, if it's two o'clock on Friday, by two o'clock on Saturday, in other words, if you train for 24 straight hours, you could be a world-class hitter. Most athletes would say, okay, I'm in, right? I, I wanna do that. Okay, well, guess what? Our eight week master class is about 24 hours of training. And when you look at it from that perspective, even though as the athletes are going through and they're in week four, week five, and all of a sudden it's like an hour, an hour and 10 minutes of training, right? Well, when you add those hours and those weeks together, it really doesn't come down to much more than 24 hours of training. So what I'm gonna to suggest to you is, man, this is a great way to speed up the development process. And as long as the athlete's doing the right movements and is very focused on it, you can make this 24 hours, you can make huge gains mechanically because we've seen athletes go from very average 13 or 14 year old hitters or 15 year old hitters. And in 24 hours, not 24 hours from today till tomorrow at two o'clock, but 24 hours of training over eight weeks, we see dramatic changes in them. I think it's important for the athletes and part of the parents to understand as well. We're not, eight weeks sounds like a long time and when the athlete's in there and it's like an hour, an hour and 10 minutes and they're doing their reps, 
They need to understand why they're doing their reps, why they need to be focused, why and how all that's building myelin. But at the end of the day to say, okay, if it only took you 24 hours to become that proficient and that good, man, that's pretty impressive, right? And that's much better than saying 10 years or 10,000 reps. Now, the reality is if I said to you 24 hours, a couple of the athletes that have worked with us that have made those dramatic changes, I'm betting they're probably closer to 30 hours or maybe even 36 hours, but 36 hours over eight weeks, come on, that's pretty good. That's pretty impressive. So I think we need to readjust the kids that are fighting it and don't want to do the work, even 24 hours or 30 hours, whatever it might be. They may just not want, they may not have a strong enough reason why they want to get better. They may not want to get better. They may think they want to as long as they don't have to do the work. But at the end of the day, this is a great bargain in terms of how quickly the body will learn over the course of eight weeks. And really, and when you look, start boiling it down to how many hours they're actually going to spend training, it's pretty impressive how efficient the body is when we do the right type of training with the right guidance and with the right focus. It's pretty impressive. Hey, if you like this video, give us a like down below, subscribe to our channel. If you'd like further information about our masterclass, our equipment, our clinics, or anything else, go to PowerCore360.com.